So one of the big reasons why these poor water and sanitation st uh, statistics matter is that poor water, sanitation, and hygiene kills. There are 2.4 million deaths each year that could be prevented if everyone practiced appropriate hygiene and had good, reliable sanitation and drinking water. Poor wash also causes diarrhea and a lot of other not so fun diseases. You can look here at that list and see the breakdown. Approximately one in five children under the age of two suffers from an episode of moderate to severe diarrhea each year. And this matters because this greatly increases their chance of death. In addition to disease and illness and death, poor wash actually causes stunting. So if you look at these pictures that I have on the screen, all four of these children are seven years old. But you can see there's a big height difference. And it's not really height that matters. I myself am chronically um, or vertically, vertically challenged, we should say, a little bit short. But the thing is, stunting has long-term impacts. As you grow up in your education, in your professional life, it's this vicious cycle. It's not just height that's stunted, but actual brain growth. And this is what we're worried about. Christian's gonna talk a little bit more about that. Poor wash also, in addition to these factors, stunting and health and illness, cost the world. It costs the world $260 billion each year. Now, once again, I'm gonna give you a moment and just answer a question in your own head. Which do you think will provide a better return on investment, water or sanitation? If you had a dollar, would you spend it on water or sanitation? So here we go. For every dollar spent on water, there's a $2 benefit um, to the community at live. And here I have a graph here that shows you some different locations. Now let's go to sanitation. For every dollar spent on sanitation, there's actually a $5.50 benefit. So I don't know about you, but that might be a little bit not what you were thinking was initially gonna be the answer. So why is this? It's really important to understand the flow of disease. So I have here showing on the screen an F diagram. And if we were in a room where you could talk, I'd make you turn to your neighbor and kind of explain what in the world is this graph showing? It's showing here, this diagram shows how a toilet, do you see this toilet barrier? That makes feces not be able to reach fluids, fields, or flies. Now, safe water alone means that your water, then if you, after you've treated your water, then it's safe and it can no longer make someone new sick. But if you look here, hygiene and hand washing actually breaks every single way that feces could get from one infected person to another infected person. So I hope you can see here that actually, huh, safe water only stops the barrier in one way. Whereas toilet, if we contain the feces after someone poops, then we don't actually have um, the feces getting anywhere, and we've stopped it at its, its uh, source, preventative medicine. Now you might be going, hey, you didn't tell me the return on investment in hand washing. It looks to me like hand washing might be the best thing to do. But once again, like I said, I just have to remember every time, huh, on my last date an apple or a banana, I didn't wash my hands first. Hi changing behavior on hygiene is really hard. But toilet, I don't know about you, but if I ask the greater audience, the last time you used a toilet, or the last time you defecated, did you use a toilet? Chances are most of you looking at this through a computer are gonna say yes. So in conclusion, um, the, the real answer here is don't eat poop.